In this video, I'd like to do the uh, find the electric field of a line of charge through direct integration. And I, I'm going to assume that you haven't seen uh, a calculation of the electric field by direct integration before. So I have this infinite line of charge, and I'm, I'm going to do the infinite case as well. Um, and so I want to know what the electric field is, some distance away from the charge. Let's call that... Uh, some we're going to find the electric field at, at some point. Okay, so th to do this, let's set up a coordinate system. I'm going to set up the uh, the x-axis along my line of charge, and therefore the the fixed point that I'm interested in looking at is some distance y. I'll put the positive y-axis through here. It's important to remember throughout that this y is a constant. We're just looking for some uh, arbitrary but fixed point above the x-axis along which lies my infinite line of charge. Okay, so how am I supposed to go about uh, solving this? If we haven't looked at this before. We have an expression for the electric field for a configuration of charges, which is the sum over all the individual charges, uh, k, the constant, times each individual charge, uh, divided by the distance that that charge happens to be, squared away from whatever point we're looking at, and then uh, the direction of the vector from the charge of interest to the point where we're calculating the electric field, and, and so we sum up over all of this. Okay, so this equation um, uh, assumes a particle model. It, it assumes every charge is a particle. And so what do we do with an infinite line of charge where we don't have that assumption? The solution is we, we come to our infinite line of charge and we look just at a point, or as close to a point as we can. And since we can't do just, uh, we can't do exactly a point, what we do is a very small uh, interval, <laughs> an infinitesimally small interval along the line of charge, which we'll call uh, dx. And this interval is so small that it can be represented as a point. The particle model applies to this uh, very small segment of the infinite line of charge. Okay, that being said, then, uh, I can sort of use this expression for this very small uh, amount of charge in this very small interval. So I calculate my, find my vector here. So I have a, a vector, r, that goes from my point, my infinitesimal interval, to my point of interest. And so, uh, and I want to calculate the electric field due to the amount of charge that's in this point. Okay, well, how much charge is there? And so, to be able to, that has some very small amount of, of charge, sort of dq, is in this, this element. So, this, this very small amount of charge, <laughs> this infinitesimal amount of charge, uh, creates a very small amount of electric field at this point, and that very small amount of electric field is equal to the constant times the very small amount of charge divided by the magnitude of this vector squared times its unit vector. And so you see, as long as I'm looking at this infinitesimally small element where I can invoke the particle model, I can use my electric field formula just like I had before. Okay, so now to get the total electric field, I want to sum up all of these very small amounts of charge. And we know that's going to lead to an integration. The, the problem is, okay, I can integrate DE, that'll give me the complete electric field, um, but how exactly do, do I integrate this thing? If I just integrate over DQ, that doesn't quite work because different uh, DQs, like the, the DQ over here or the, the DQ over here, this small amount of charge, has different uh, uh, different R vectors. We'll have different magnitudes and unit vectors that go into this integration. And so what we really want to do is, is we want to integrate over X. And so we need to uh, reproduce all of the terms on this side of the expression in terms of position, so then we can just integrate over position. All right, so the first thing that we do is introduce the 
concept of charge density. And so the charge density in one dimension is we call uh, lambda, lambda. It's a linear charge density. And this gives us the, uh, the charge per unit length along the of, along this uh, line of charge. So it has units of charge per length. And so then we're, we're going to assume that this is uh, constant, that it's not as a function of time. So this is just equal to some constant lambda. And so the small amount of charge within some uh, very small length is equal to the uh, density times that length. Okay, so now I have my small amount of charge um, it is now an expression of the small amount of um, uh, a length. Okay, so so what about these other r vectors? Okay, so if we go back to look at what this is for some arbitrary point dx, what is this vector? Okay, well, it's going to have an x component. That's right here. And so it's going to have a magnitude x, a magnitude of x, given its location, which is going to be negative. And that's the i component. Do you see how that works? If, if I'm right here, this is some negative, this is some uh, value that's below zero. Right, some some x below zero. I'm on the left side of the uh, the origin, but the x component is positive, so the x component is negative. Uh, the location that I am for this very small element of charge. Okay, and so then think about it the same way. If we go over here, let's go over here, and I have this vector r it's going to have an x component that is negative at a positive value of x. So the r vector, at, as, a, as a function of x, wherever it is, the x component is negative the x location of that element. All right. And so now we can find the, uh, the y component, which in this case is just positive y, j hat. So the y component of this vector is just this height, which is a constant. All right. So this is the, the vector r. And so once we have the vector, we can calculate the magnitude, which is the square root of x squared plus y squared. And this is r hat. And now we calculate r hat, which is uh, the r vector over the magnitude. Okay, um, I, I will say that for this type of problem, um, it, it most a, a lot of books and in, in, and every physicist would would say, uh, look by symmetry, <laughs> there's there's going to be no x components to this problem, and so they just calculate the y component and integrate from there. Um, and so I made a conscious choice not to do that here. Uh, if you've never seen that before, I'm not sure that's as helpful. If you just if that's obvious to you, that's great. Um, the the problem with that argument is that you have to start with uh, what symmetry means, and that okay, it's the the system is independent on a reflection through the origin for this particular problem, and then you have to go to that means that the field has to have the same symmetry as the charge distribution, and what that means, and then <laughs> infinite, and, and because that has to be true uh, everywhere along the line, because it's infinite in extent in any direction, at any point y, you can draw the y-axis. There's actually quite a bit of reasoning just to say, sort of by symmetry, there's no x component. And so uh, I'm not going to try to invoke symmetry. I'm just going to go through and, and solve the the problem exact solve the problem uh, completely and we'll see the uh, x component drop out as we go through all right so uh, we have the the position vector and now we want to calculate the unit vector so the unit vector then is going to be uh, negative uh, uh, x over the magnitude 
square root of x squared plus y squared. This is i hat plus y over the, the square root of x squared plus y squared j hat. All right. And so now I have my position vector and thus my magnitude as a function of x and my unit vector as a function of x. Remember in this problem y is a fixed constant. And so now I have all my terms as a function of x and I can substitute them all into my expression for the the electric field and then I can integrate. All right. Well, let's let's do that. So I have my small amount of electric field. I'm just going to try to bring that back here. Uh, that's equal to k, the constant. The um, small amount of charge, which is lambda, the constant dx, divided by the distance that that uh, at any point happens to be away from the point of interest, which is x squared plus y squared, because the uh, distance is square root of that. And now all of this times the unit vector, which is x squared plus y squared i hat plus y over x squared plus y squared j hat. Okay, so now let's, we'll just do some algebra. We multiply all this through and we get dE, my small amount of electric field, is equal to uh, negative k lambda x over, this becomes x squared plus y squared to the three halves, this times this, this is all i hat plus then k lambda y over the square root of x squared plus y squared j hat. Uh, dx, dx, dx. I can't forget that term either. So now I've recast my problem so that I have d, e on the left and everything on the right is in terms of x. So now I can integrate over x. Since I have an infinite line of charge, this is from zero to the complete electric field, and this goes from negative infinity to infinity, negative infinity to infinity. In, um, well, because I've got a, I, I simply have an integration over the position variable. All right, so now we can use some tricks to simplify our mathematics because this integral right here is the product of an odd function, x, and an even function, x squared. And that means this is an integral of an odd function over the entire uh, coordinate system. And so if, if you're not familiar with even and odd functions, there's a, a videos on, a vid I make a video on that too, there's things out there, but we know that the, the integral over all space of something that's odd, an odd function dx is equal to zero, and so, and uh, if a product of an odd and an even function is an odd function. So this is zero, just like we thought it would be. And this is an even function. There's no function of x up here. This is just a function of x squared. So this being an even function then uh, becomes the limit from zero to twice, the limit from zero to infinity of this uh, expression, of this equation. Oh, I, I did, sorry, that's a bit square root again. That should be three halves, just like the, uh, the other one here. x squared plus y squared to the three halves, j hat. Okay, so now I can go ahead and uh, do this integral change colors here, a little board with yellow. So these are all constants and pull those out. The electric field then is equal to 2k lambda y, which is a constant. We're integrating over x, j hat, integral zero to infinity dx of this thing. Okay, so um, 
This is a definite integral. You could look up the answer to this, but it's also not too hard to just calculate it directly. So this is 2k lambda y j hat uh, limit of x going to infinity of the indefinite integral, which is x over y squared uh, square root x squared plus y squared, evaluated at 0 and x. Okay, so what, what uh, do we do with this? Uh, we can pull out this y squared, and also I'm going to uh, multiply the top and the bottom of this by uh, 1 over x. So once I uh, pull this y out, that cancels a, uh, a term of that. So we get 2k lambda over y, j, and the limit as x goes to infinity of, okay, this is 1, the numerator, and this is now, I bring this x, this 1 over x in the denominator inside the radical, and I get 1 plus y squared over x squared, and, and I do that because now it's uh, uh, obvious that as x goes to infinity, this goes to 0, and this whole thing goes to 1. So our electric field in the end, 2 lambda k over y j. So we get that, yes, there's only the electric field in the y direction. There is no x component. Uh, we also find that it decays uh, linearly with distance away from the wire. We say it's proportional to uh, the inverse of the separation of, of the, the distance away from the wire.